Patriots Colts coming up. There is Adam Vinatieri, one of the captains for the Colts. He was out there for the coin flip, shaking hands with his former teammates. Ellis Hobbs awaiting the kick. Vinatieri, the all-time leading Patriot scorer, overtook Gino Capaletti in his career at New England. And he gets this one started with a boot down to the six. And it's Hobbs trying to find room up the middle, and there is nothing there except Marlon Jackson to greet him. And then they'll start from the 24. Actually coming out with double tight ends, Benjamin Watson in the lineup. And the play action fake to Dillon. Brady rolling out and firing one hopper in the area of Gaffney. Watched Bob Sanders. He was only able to play four regular season games because of a knee injury. His return has made all the difference. Second and ten, it's Dillon spinning and picking up about three yards. Colts defense has been spectacular in these two playoff games on third down. They've only allowed three conversions in the two games on third and seven. Falk picks up one, though, right up the middle, right up the gut. Finally brought down by Sanders after a pickup of eight. Just another clever way, Jim, we saw last week in the two-point conversion. So vital to the Patriots getting the chance or winning that game against San Diego. They give a unique formation. They bring Kevin Falk back in the backfield to slow the pass rush down. Draws and screens. That was the first draw of the day. First down at the 36. Set up a screen and Falk unable to hold on to it. Was ready to turn it upfield. Well, actually what it was was the second draw of the day by the New England Patriots. That is always a key. How do you slow a team that rushes the passer down, passer so well like the Colts do? You run draws to make those defensive ends slow down and screen plays to take advantage of the fact that they're up the field so much. So they throw again on first down, incomplete. Another second and ten situation. And it's Dillon again, working the left side, and met by Nick Harper first, only two yards. This Indianapolis defense that every regular season game allowed 100 yards rushing by the other team. That's the first time in 22 years that a defense was unable at least once to keep a team under 100 yards on the ground. Both playoff games, Kansas City with Larry Johnson, and last week the Ravens, Jamal Lewis and everyone else both held under 100 on the ground as a team third and eight Brady little jump pass and it's too low for Falk to field it Tom Brady had what he wanted that time he felt the pressure and that's what does it to quarterbacks all the time. Robert Mathis coming around to his right side makes him step up. Kevin Falk is open for the first down, but Tom Brady throwing a little jump pass comes up a little short. Jumping up in the air, trying to elevate, get the pass over the arms of Freeney. Still, it's incomplete. And Todd Sauerbrunn signed just three days before Christmas. The third punter of the season for New England and fielded by Wilkins who turns it down the sidelines and out of bounds near the 30. Able to get past the first couple of tacklers, and that's James Sanders bumping him out. After a 49-yard boot, 16-yard return, and Peyton Manning getting a chance to take on New England in the playoffs at home. New we'll begin at the 29 with the rookie runner, a die, getting the outer edge and bumped out at the 35. We've got Richard Seymour shaken up. Clutching that right ankle. Of course, the Patriots only pro bowler will go to the sidelines, have to sit out at least one play, and Jarvis Green takes his position. Crowd booing because they think, well, that's, they, they're thinking he might be faking trying to slow the Colts offense down. Not this early and not Richard Seymour. Second down and four. And again, it's a dive. 
Hip hopping and out to about the 36 yard line. Only a gain of one. Wilfrick and Warren combine on the hit. Third and three coming up, Phil. And again, 36 years ago, you talk about the Colts the last time the organization was in the Super Bowl when they won it with the Jim O'Brien field goal to beat the Cowboys trying to go back to Miami where that game took place when the Baltimore Colts beat the Cowboys third down and three Manning's first pass down the field and almost pulled in by Joseph Adai he was out there one on one with Bruski defending pass protection that's what Peyton Manning got he wanted to go to his left. Three receivers on the left side, and nobody is open. Kind of wants to go to Reggie Wayne, but because he had extra time, he looks down the right sideline, and what a matchup. Joseph Adai against Teddy Bruschi. Joseph Adai, a running back, not able to make the tough catch. Kevin Falk, the returner. Hunter Smith with a flag. And it's a beautiful boot to the 11. And stopped immediately by Taiwan Hagler. And it's going against the Colts, and I'm sure the Patriots will accept the penalty. Illegal motion, number 56, offense. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. What did you see out of that first offensive series for the Colts? It ends up being a three and out. Well, I saw a lot of things from both teams, Jim. They, of course, you always want to try to decide what they're going to do against you, but... Different looks, offense and defense, and the Colts, they do a lot of shifting because they want to find out two things. If the Patriots are going to play man-to-man -man coverage, but they're moving guys around and going different formations because everybody knows, even a casual fan, that New England had success one time, what? Beating up the receivers, being physical, so they want to make sure that does not happen today. Well, Hunter Smith punted only once in the regular season matchup at Foxborough. And already with a punt here in the early going. Fair catch by Falk at the 25. Second series for the Patriots. And we see for the first time Lawrence Maroney, rookie out of Minnesota. Fake to the rookie and a little toss. That's Caldwell side stepping the defender and picking up a first down. Gain of 18. Well, you can already see the pattern here by the New England Patriots. They are not going to fall into the trap that the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens fell into, and that's running the football too much. Jim, you said it. They've given up some big running games, but you got to loosen them up some first, and the Patriots look like they got a plan to do that, especially on first down. Dwight Freeney hobbled off, Phil, and number 91, Josh Thomas, replaces him on that defensive line, and there's Maroney in traffic right off the handoff into the arms of Anthony McFarlane and it loses two. So Freeney out for that last play. Dwight Freeney coming around the outside since it's going to be a quick throw by Tom Brady. Matt Light goes down low and looks like it might have tweaked the knee or the ankle. And now Gary Brackett is down. Brackett is out for this play but you see Freeney returns. They go to five defensive backs. Marlon Jackson joining the secondary. Brady facing a second and 12. And another draw, Falk. Now to about the 45. It'll be third and eight coming up. Rob Morris on the hit. Well, Jim, I talked about third downs for the New England Patriots, and I know people say, well, that's important in every game. No, it isn't. A lot of times you can win games and be terrible on third down, but against this Colts team where big plays are tough, you face a lot of third and seven and eight. You pick those up, you keep them on the field, and you tire a fast, smaller defense. You try to wear them down. Hand signals right down the line for the Patriots, and they run it. Falk 
very close to the first. The spot coming up from the far side looks like it'll be just short. Benjamin Watson threw a block. So did Stephen Neal. Carollo will call for a measurement. It's going to be close, but boy, what a trend already we're seeing. Tom Brady in a shotgun, running a lot of draws, taking advantage of a defense that just goes full speed. Ben Watson on the outside gets Dwight Freeney, and then Kevin Falk makes a couple guys miss. And he is a chain link short. Bracket back in on defense for the Colts. Fourth and inches. Dylan with ease has it into the secondary, inside the 20, and bounced out by Bethea at the 13-yard line. That goes for 35 yards on fourth down. Well, they did. did the other thing, Jim. They hand it to Corey Dillon, and Heath Evans leading the way, number 44, is the guy that blocks Bethea and turns a five- or ten-yard run into a long game. But look at everybody packed inside for the Colts defense. Nobody outside to tackle, and that's why Corey Dillon had such a big lane to run in. And Daniel Graham throwing a big block as well. And New England the first to threaten. Maroney, Evans out in front. The rookie slices down to about the three near another first. Hard to go outside when you play the Indianapolis Colts. So what you have to do, and that Lawrence Maroney, fast enough and quick enough to make it work. He goes out, fakes outside, cuts it back in. Boy, the right to the line with Brady trying to sneak yeah. for the first, and it looks like he's a little short. There's the quarterback sneak I told you about. It's just two plays late. But they got the uh, no huddle thing going that time too, Phil. Well, Jim, second and short. They just try to run up there. They have a call for it. Tom Brady yells out a code name. They all know what it means. Line up fast. He's going to run the quarterback sneak to pick up an easy first down, they hope. Another measurement on the way. The Patriots, they've kept this defense off guard a little. Watt's done it. The draw plays on third down. The big run on short yardage. The crowd is... Of course, they're not going to be loud when the opposing team's offense is making plays. Klecko, Daryl Reed, some of the backup defensive linemen in there for the Colts trying to plug holes. Third and inches. It's Maroney fumbling. Ball still loose. And the Colts in the scrum. No, the ball's in the end zone. And the Patriots have recovered for a touchdown. Logan Mankins. There were three Colts who had the football surrounded, and suddenly it squirts out into the end zone. And the left guard, Logan Mankin, scores the game's first touchdown. Lawrence Maroney never gets the handoff. Does he reach for it? No. Tom Brady does it squirt out of his hand. And look at the fight underneath. Bob Sanders and Nick Harper of the Colts those teammates were battling for it, and somehow it went crossways for them, and New England capitalizes, of all things. Gostowski with the extra point. So a big fourth down conversion by Dillon, and then a fumble recovery for a touchdown. New England on the board first at the AFC title game. Logan Mankins was the Patriots' First round selection, 32nd pick overall, last pick of the first round, 2005. Raised on a 10,000 acre ranch out in Fresno, where along with his dad did a little rodeo action in his young years. He wrestled a few steers. And calf roping, and now he has Took helped. Him down. Yep. Helped the Patriots lasso the early lead here in Indianapolis. Gostowski kicking to Terrence Wilkins, and that travels all the way to the midway point of the end zone for a touchback. Does Tom Brady ever get the football? Oh, Lawrence Maroney's lead hand because he reaches out, knocks the football out of Tom Brady's hand. You got to keep your arms to the chest if you're a running back. That causes the fumble. Hey, Manny knows there's a fumble. How, man, how uh, dejecting is that? He's watching it 
to the opposite end off a giant scoreboard. Now he's back under center with an early deficit. Just the fourth snap of the game for the Colts. Little play action with pressure. Zips it. Open man. It's Harrison coming back for it. A nice eight-yard gain. Line up in the same defensive look, but do multiple, multiple, multiple things out of it. Second and two, and the second effort by a dive picks up a first down. And by the way, that New England defense without the services of Richard Seymour. Remember, he was injured on the game's first snap for the Colts. And they've taped up an ankle. They say he may return, but he's still out. Well, Joseph Adai and, and the New England Patriots talked about it. They said, listen, this Colts team, they are not finesse. They've got to be proud of the fact that they can line up against every team in this league now, and they can run the football and run it at will like they did last week in the playoff game. So Indy moves the chains for the first time in this one. And on first down, another throw, and it's knocked away by Asante Samuel, who does that so well. That was intended for Harrison. And he did it a number of times last week on the Charger receivers. Second and ten coming up. We've got Utech in a slot to the right, Clark in a slot to the left. Quick toss. Ball in the arms of Reggie Wayne, almost able to squeeze past James Sanders. And had he done so, he might have gone all the way. 13 yards. Peyton Manning, they love to throw these quick screens to the wide receivers when a team is trying to pressure them. That's their answer to take care of the blitz. And that time, they almost squirted one last week against the Ravens. And you said it, Jim, the last tackler stopped the touchdown. Harper heading to the locker room. He was... In on that attempted fumble recovery that ended in the arms of the Patriots for a touchdown. And now to a die, and Colvin the first to hit him. Hawkins was in on that previous hit, too, when they brought down Wayne. And Roosevelt Colvin coming home here to the Dome to play, raised in Indianapolis and an employee for many years here at the RCA Dome, working the concessions. Yeah, he said he might come up today and look what, see what it looks like from his old uh, working spot. Yep, section 111. He knew it well. Where he used to not only sell cotton candy, but snow cones too. First time ever, though, playing in the RCA Dome. After working it so many times. Manning going to go for the long ball, and Harrison has it tipped away again. Samuel on the coverage. Well, Asante Samuels, he knows when they play certain defense, that the Indianapolis Colts are going to go deep down the field. And it's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage. He is in excellent position. He's all over Marvin Harrison because that's the route he expected. When you give him a chance and there's nobody in the middle of the field, the Indianapolis Colts are going to throw it deep, and it's up to the corner. That time, Asante Samuels to knock it down. Third down and six. Aaron Moorhead wide to the left for Peyton Manning. New England territory for the first time, trying to keep the chains moving, and they do. Clark can get up. He was not down, not down by Eric Alexander. And he takes it to the 36, gain of 12. Hey, did this look like the big, big play last week in the playoff game? Very tight coverage on the inside receiver, but Manning sticks it in there. Throws it outside where only Dallas Clark has a chance to catch it. Exact play, same kind of catch by Clark that moved the chains in that game against the Ravens on the way to the clinching field goal. Now on first down with Seymour back in. Seymour right away makes the tackle of Joseph Adai. You know, you know Jim, when I said that this Patriots defense, it wants to show you Different looks. Richard Seymour back into play. Can he handle it at that ankle? Is it going to bother stopping the run? But they want to give Peyton Manning. I wasn't trying to be Yogi Berra. They want to give him the same look, but they want to move off of it every single time because they know if you line up the same way every time, you have no chance, if you do the same defense, to stop Peyton Manning. Is that what Yogi said? It's the same but different. And it's over to Utech. Ridden down by Bruski. The spot looks like it's very close to the first down yardage. You know, it gets hard, too, if you're a defensive player going against the Colts. 
They do so many things, and after they start having success, you go, well, what's coming next? And I always say this, when you get a defense thinking that, they are now reacting instead of attacking, and that, that hurts almost every NFL defense. This one requiring another measurement. So Clark picking up a big first down, and UTEC another tight end almost getting that one. It'll be third and inches to go for Tony Dungy. Trying to direct his team to the Super Bowl to meet up with his great friend Lovey Smith, who's headed to South Florida with the Bears' big win today. Well, when they played Kansas City in the first round wild card game, Jim, who was in the stands? Lovey Smith sitting right there in the so middle of the dome. Had to buy the ticket, too. I think he was <laughs> upset by that. And, uh, you know, Lovey Smith came to the National Football League as a linebacker coach in 1996, serving under Tony Dungy. Down in Tampa. Heck, every, play, every coach on that staff now is just about a head there. Head coaches everywhere in the league. Herm Edwards, Lovey Smith, and maybe Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh. Not sure about that one yet. Third and inches. And they'll try to get it with the die, and he's hit quickly, but leaning forward. Vince Wilfrick busting across that line, making first contact. I'll tell you, the chain gang getting a little aerobic workout here in the first quarter. They may be called on again. Well, it's a good run by Joseph Adai. Penetration by Vince Wilfork. And the Patriots, oh, and probably got a good spot that time. But the Patriots, unique, able to do so many different things on defense. Got just enough, first down. Because they put a lot of pressure on their three defensive linemen to stop the run. So they'll have a new set of downs at the New England 26. And the Patriots defense, why did they have so much success this year? Second in the NFL against, uh, against the score of the Sorry. Sorry. offense. Because when you get down inside, they just keep giving but it's hard to get that scoring strike against them. Well, this is the 11th play of this drive for the Colts. And it's a run, right side, a die, shaking down to about the 20 with a flag. And it looks like it's going against the Colts for a hold. Holding, 71, offense, 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Ryan Deem, the right tackle, over seal that right side. Here he comes. Watch him, 71 on the right side. Well, once the play goes by him, just a natural reaction. Reaches out, grabs the jersey of Ty Warren. Pretty easy call. You know, I was going to say, Jim, you saw Asante Samuel, and you've said his name and talked about him so much. He's come up and he's played so well against the pass. But you don't talk about it enough. He can come up, and he is an excellent tackler when the offense has run outside and come his way. It's first and 20 after the penalty. And they fake. And go long for Wayne in the end zone. And another gem of a defensive play by Ellis Hobbs. Knocks down a sure touchdown. On the outside, Reggie Wayne, nice route, makes a good fake to the outside. But Ellis Hobbs, I, Hobbs, I already said it, and it's the same defense. When you are one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, nobody in the middle, the Colts love to throw it deep. That's twice they've tried it. Manning's been on target, but the defensive backs have knocked them both down. Second down and 20. That's a lot of pressure to put on your corners. They've come up with the play so far. Now they're going to swing it over to a die, and that side clamped down by Samuel. The corners continue to come up and make plays. Mike Vrabel also assisting. Gain only a yard. Well, we had a chance to talk to Mike Vrabel last night, too, and 
He's pretty easy to get riled up, isn't he? Yeah, and you know, he's been playing. I've been watching. He's on the outside. Tully Bant to Kane. He's on the sidelines. Well, I think he was trying to tell us that last night without seeing it. We're going to give him a lot of different looks, and you don't know where everybody's going to line up. They're just trying to confuse the Colts' offense by having guys switch positions. So third down and 19. Try to get as much as they can with a die. He's into the secondary and finally dropped by James Sanders. Gains 11 and will bring out Adam Vinatieri. He, of course, took care of all the scoring for the Colts last week at Baltimore with five field goals. And in his career, not only as a Colt this year where he never missed at home, but even traveling here as a member of the Patriots, he's never missed at the RCA Dome. 26 of 26 field goals in his career here. 42 yards, Smith on the hold. And then a Terry, dangerously close, but good. Vinatieri with his ninth field goal of the postseason. That ties a single postseason record in NFL history. Hobbs from a yard deep. It's the full steam ahead going until he runs into a wall at the 28. There's Marlon Jackson. He's in for Nick Harper who is out with an ankle sprain and questionable whether he'll return. That's the word from the locker room. On first down, Dillon ripped off a long run the last time he handled it. This time, a gain of about two. Jason David chopped him down. Well, you know, Jim, there are a lot of ways to deal with crowd noise. One way the Patriots are doing. No snap count sometimes when Tom Brady is under center. He just pets, coping on the rear end. He probably yells out, Get ready to the offensive line, and they snap the ball right after it. So many teams in the league now able to deal with loud noise when they're on the road. Final seconds of the quarter. Snap away. Last play of the quarter goes to Watson and bounced out by Bob Sanders. 7-3 Patriots through one. Jim Nance and Phil Sims, second quarter getting started. What about the quarterbacks in that first quarter? Well, Peyton Manning, very close, Jim. Three potential big plays down the field, just missed on all three. Third and a yard to go. Patriots from the 37, diving ahead. Brady gets this one. Well, you're so quick with these, he's got it. Are you it's really called, sure? It's called laser vision. Is that it? <laughs> so why are you wearing those binocular glasses? <laughs> Same you? reason you are. Okay. And why don't you wear them on camera? Because I'm vain. <laughs> and you're honest. First down, 39, and Freeney out there trying to stir something up. Mathis is out. Thomas lined up on the other side defensively. Out of the pocket, little toss Evans. Sanders hones in on him, but not until he gets near another first. You can already tell the difference when you watch this game planned by the Patriots. We talked about it. Look at all the blockers on one side. So they're just going to put all the pressure on the other side to protect Tom Brady. His movement in the pocket, it's always been as good as anybody's in the NFL. And trying to get rid of the football. Don't take sacks. Negative plays. So far, so good. We said he would throw it short, and that's what they've done, too, in the passing game. And that was good for a first down. Maroney stutter steps and dropped after a gain of five by McFarlane. You know, you hear that term all the time, game management. Well, what does it really mean? You know, it's, well, it's using the snap counts, little things. Tom Brady that time, quick snap. All of a sudden, it gets four or five yards because the defense is not ready. The quarterback sneaks, and just no one the, how important it is to get rid of the football, and so far he has done it. It's second and five, again in Colts territory. Maroney steps away from the hit, 
Bethea, the second to get to him, but another first down. They're running the football on Indianapolis, and this is starting to look like what was so troublesome for Indianapolis all regular season long. Well, what is happening, too, that time? It's just Lawrence Maroney, Marlon Jackson, not able to make that tackle, and that's one of the reasons why this Colts defense has been so good in the first two playoff games because they have missed just a handful of tackles. Today, the Patriots breaking some arm tackles and also eluding a few of the would-be tacklers, too. As a team already with 84 yards rushing. From the 38 on first down, and Brady is hit. Gets the pass away intended for Daniel Graham, and it was Freeney who was in on Brady. Well, you always know which guy didn't get the block done. That time, Matt Light comes back, says to Tom Brady, sorry, my guy. And the Patriots, every once in a while, putting some pressure on Matt Light. One-on-one, -on -one. what a hit by Dwight Freeney. They think, not all the time, that Matt Light can block Dwight Freeney one-on-one. -on -one. Second down and 10. And Dylan back in. And Dylan trying to just get back to the line of scrimmage. And you know, Jim, you see Dwight Freeney, and the sack numbers were down. But have we done one Colts game where every coach, all the offensive players talk about him? And Bill Belichick, did. he said this about Dwight Freeney. Make no doubt about it. He said he is a great player. And he's had five sacks in the last three Colts home games, including two here against Kansas City. In the wild card round, third down and a long 10. They get it over to Falk on the screen, and he will not get near the first. Wrapped up by Raheem Brock. There's so many things. It's a blitz that time by the Colts. They never blitz. The Patriots got the right play. That was Hayden, Kelvin Hayden coming in underneath with that big hit and fourth down and six in that gray area and they keep the offense out there. Bypassing a 52 yard field goal try. Well, Bill Belichick deciding not to put the pressure on his field goal kicker. He prefers to put the football in the hands of Tom Brady. Well, they call a timeout first. You can see the Patriots have had fourth down successes. This man will, he'll go for it more than just about anyone in the league. Well, you know, I don't know how much he learned from Bill Parcells, but he sat over there as a giant assistant, and Bill Parcells never afraid to take a chance. You got to take chances to win big games, and this is one for the Patriots right now. They have to get to the 28 for a first. Fourth down play. Colts showing blitz. From the gun, here they come. Brady gets time, and it's Troy Brown taken off. Brown down at the seven-yard line, making yet another clutch catch in his long and remarkable career. 27 yards. Unbelievable. The receiving core really took shape when Jabbar Gaffney and Roche Caldwell became the outside receivers, and they could put Troy Brown on the inside. As an inside receiver, oh, they stack it so... They're not able to hit Troy Brown as he comes off the line of scrimmage. That was the key, the free release, the man coverage. Troy Brown open and very good pass protection. First and goal to go. It's Dylan going in with ease. Touchdown, New England. That was some drive by the New England Patriots. It's a mixture of everything that they wanted to do today. Different formations, third down. And Corey Dillon, that play was designed to go up inside, but he could just sense it. Nobody outside. Bad positioning by the Indianapolis Colts defense, and Corey Dillon goes in untouched. He juked right past Jason David. He would have been in if it was flag football. He doesn't try to juke many people either. So just like that. 14 to 3 Patriots. Well, this is what New England does to you. They keep you guessing at all times. Dylan had that fourth down carry on their first scoring drive that went for 35 yards. 
Yeah. This time after the 27 yard play to Brown on fourth down, Dylan takes it the rest of the way from seven out. Tony Dungy said, we got to be ready for the start. Can we survive it? Well, 14 to three, you can still survive it. Wilkins, who had a long run back in the game in November, went 70 against this team. Uh, this time ball was on the carpet. Was he down first? No signal that he was. Well, coming up with the football is Hagler. Taiwan with the recovery. Well, Jim, so as we watch it, it looks like he goes down. Well, first we got a face mask. Yeah, he was the and Terrence right. Wilkins is he was down. The left knee was fumble. down. Yep. Well, not what Manning and the Colts were expecting to be this far down this early, just five minutes into the second. Dominique Rhodes for the first time in the game. Reach the handoff. And Wilford gets credit for the tackles. Whew. I'd be sweating a lot if I was out there because it's going to keep going downfield if you play him that way. It's a second and seven. And Manning's pass is intercepted. It's Asante Samuel going in untouched. That was intended for Marvin Harrison. Asante Samuels, I'm not sure it's not Champ Bailey because they, they're looking like the same guy the last few weeks. And Samuel, watch it. He sees the play. He diagnoses what Peyton Manning's going to do. It's one-on-one, -on -one, and he just reacts to the football faster than the wide receiver does. He always told us, remember, Jim, last week, I see the receiver, I feel him, but I watched the quarterback, and that was a perfect example. He felt Marvin Harrison right to his left. He watched Peyton Manning. That's why he was able to break on the ball, get to the interception, and get a touchdown. For Samuel, it's his fourth pick in his last five playoff games. Samuel with his third career interception return for a touchdown in the postseason ties the great Willie Brown for an NFL postseason record. Former high school quarterback, when we visit with him, talking about how instincts and all of that has made such a yep. big difference. Really yep. playing the role here of Ty Law tonight, his old position. That's right. It's Wilkins. And that actually backs him up another five yards. Chad Jackson on the tackle. Well, you know, Jim, the interception, I think it's just, it's spectacular, really. Just a tremendous play by Asante Samuel sitting inside and just waiting and having the perfect angle to react to the pass and make the interception. Now, as I watch the replay, I got to take a little bit away from him because the safety did come over the top of him. So when that happens, Asante Samuels knows, hey, I can be a little more aggressive because if he fakes me out and goes deep, somebody's there to help me out. Now from the 17, I think this crowd here in shock. Manning on the run, slides back to the line of scrimmage. You're right, same side. Ty Law, so much success in the postseason, Jim, and Asante Samuel just fast and nimble and able to turn to cover receivers short, and, and we've already seen it. He can go deep with them, too. Second down and 11. Manning with Colvin dropping him for a sack at the five. Well, there's no doubt the Colts are rattled, and... If you're Peyton Manning, it's tough to pull the trigger unless they're wide open. But Roosevelt Colvin comes around from Peyton Manning's left. He said, we're so close last time they played, but this time they're getting there. And the coverage down the field, it's there because they're trying to go for the big play. The Patriots were waiting on it. Two straight sacks. But didn't he tell us last night, we were so close during the regular season we were always at Peyton Manning's feet. Today, we got to be a half step quicker, and so far, they have been. 
A flag is thrown from the secondary just as Manning was calling timeout. Delayed offense. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Put it back at the outside the two yard line. Peyton during the regular season threw only nine picks. His sixth did not come until the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And now he has six interceptions thrown in two and a half playoff games. What what has happened here. Well. Bad decisions of course always lead to interceptions a couple times Jim it's just been tremendous plays by defensive players and most of the time when you go to the postseason what do you see better defenses third and 24 and from out of the end zone he launches it way down the field for Harrison almost made it right off the shoulder pad almost made the catch it was Samuel right with him but somehow it went past Samuel's arm and Harrison almost pulled it down good job by Peyton Manning the pressure they are coming after him now and he takes a big hit that time from Roosevelt Colvin and the one thing they got to go to the sideline Asante Samuels Samuel might have just tipped the football before it got to Marvin Harrison but you got to stay calm you can't keep throwing it down the field if you're the Indianapolis Colts Hunter Smith punt Takes Troy Brown back to the 43 and New England's offense will come out with the big lead at 21 to 3. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims, Solomon Wilcox, Steve Tasker here at the RCA Dome. If you're New England and you've got a special play that you think can get a big play, this might be the shot where you take it. Maroney instead is Dex. Behind the line of scrimmage by Bob Sanders. For a loss of four. No one enjoying this early action more than the Kraft family. There's Mr. and Mrs. Robert Kraft celebrating the 13 year anniversary today of when they purchased this franchise. And since taking over, his team has won more games, more playoff games, more conference championships, and Super Bowls than any other team in the league. Back long ago, before that, he was a season ticket holder at the old Sullivan Stadium. Second down and 13, we'll call it. Over to Brown, and he is knocked down by Morris. It'll be about third and eight coming up. Well, the one thing this Colts defense will do when it sits back and you throw it short, they come flying to the receiver and they knock them down. Hard to get extra yards when they're playing zone defense. You get the extra yards like Troy Brown did. When they're chasing you man to man. Well protected. All kinds of time and Brady takes advantage. With a first down picked up by Benjamin Watson. They had Freeney shut down with Matt Light Logan Mankins. Watson from Brady's right side and it's all about the protection initially nobody is open but the extra time Matt Light against Dwight Freeney we said they put a lot of pressure on him and generally so far today Matt Light's done a good job so they convert on another third and long threatening again and it's Caldwell. about five two for two on those fourth down tries for 62 yards both leading the touchdowns Maroney lost a yard with that one bracket able to make the quick hit you know I want to go back we were talking about Dwight Freeney because he is such a big part of this game making sure for the Patriots side that he doesn't wreck what they're trying to do and they like Matt Light against Dwight Freeney because Matt Light's not like 6'7 or 6'8. He's only 6'4, so he can get down and stay right with him. Where other left tackles, 6'7, 6'8, he gets underneath them, and that helps him get around. Gaffney to the right. He's had two huge games coming in. Quiet so far in this one. Third down, open. Watson bounced out with a flag. Had enough for the first, the nine yard game, but we'll check the flag. And it's going against the Patriots.
Pass interference, 80, offense. 10 yard penalty, replay third down. And that is the first penalty of the game against the Patriots. Three receivers to the left, and what they're trying to do, the Patriots. Here's Troy Brown. He says the heck would be in a wide receiver, and that is a good call. Because when a defensive player establishes a spot on the field, you have to go around him. You just can't run through him. Well, that takes away a first down and pushes him all the way back to the 38. Probably not anything they would consider if it's an incompletion here for a long field goal. So perhaps even out of field goal range, depending on this play. And they go with Evans. And they collide on him with another flag. Takes the football to the 34. Illegal motion, number 84, offense. Five yard penalty, replay third down. So they'll make them replay the down. It'll be a third and 21 on the way. 84, Ben Watson. Tom Brady calling out the new blocking assignments. Ben Watson gets in tighter, but he's not set long enough before the football is snapped. Back-to-back -back New England penalties, really their only mistakes of the game so far. If you take away the Maroney fumble, which led to a touchdown recovery by New England anyway. Have to get to the 22 for a first. Greeny coming in, and Brady will just take the sack back at the 49. Freeney, Brock, and Mathis were all converging. Dwight Freeney that time so far outside, it made it very, very tough for Matt Light to get out there. He had to go around the tight end who was right in front of him, but his speed and crowd noise put it all together. That's a tough assignment for Matt Light. So the first real break of the night for the Colts, just when it appeared Watson had picked up a first down, it's nullified with the Brown pass interference call. And then another penalty and a sack, and Sauer brings out the punt for the second time. And the wave and the fair catch at the 11. And still three minutes to go second quarter and down 21 3 Manning on the play action with Warren right on him able to just launch it incomplete. The New England Patriots very big and powerful up front. That's what they're noted for. But if you're Peyton Manning where are you going to throw it down the field. A lot of deep patterns and deep patterns. You know what that means. You got to give the quarterback a lot of time. And right now, Peyton Manning is not getting it. Second down and 10. Can they muster anything here before the half? They've had, you think about it, a long stretch without finding the end zone. The die, nothing there. No gain. First hit by Jarvis Green. Again, all field goals last week against that stout Baltimore defense. And when you take to account the three postseason games here over the last four years with New England 25 drives and only one touchdown well that last number was the one nine turnovers mm -hmm. that is a killer well, it's impossible to overcome that especially against a team like the Patriots who are well rounded and good in almost every area so third and ten and the Colts have a first down with Reggie Wayne. 18 yards. Working on Ray Mickens. Well, that's what you need to do more of, especially in this situ situation. Reggie Wayne goes from the outside receiver inside. He's so talented, tough to cover, but Peyton Manning needs to throw more intermediate throws and quit looking for that big score. Was that not big play.
does not get a playoff before the two minute warning. First down from the 30. And the Colts have all three timeouts to work with. Open is Harrison. And he's able to slice right past Samuel to pick up the first down and a total of 12. Trying to regain a little composure here, Phil. Absolutely. Get your confidence back. Get some composure. And you'd like to get at least a field goal out of this. Sideline they go. Moorhead pulls it in near another first. You know, Jim, not only to build your confidence and make you feel better, but take away some of that from the New England Patriots, too. You know, they're feeling pretty invincible right now. They're covering the receivers until these last couple throws, and they've been getting to Peyton Manning. That last one for 11 and another first. And it's Moorhead, second straight play with the catch. Eric Alexander knocks him down. Moorhead out of Illinois. His father, Emery Moorhead, a former Bear. He'd love to have a chance to somehow see his team rally and take on his dad's team. Meanwhile, it is Dallas Clark. And the Colts suddenly have a rhythm going. That goes for 13. Get a couple first downs, just like the Patriots, what they've done. Get a couple first downs. Defensive linemen, come on, they can't rush the passer seven or eight straight times. Manning going long for Moorhead into the end zone and through it. As Ellis Hobbs was with him step for step. And as I say that, the New England Patriots make mass substitutions. And they can do it against this hurry up offense because the football was thrown so far down the field, they have to wait for Aaron Moorhead to get back before they can run the next play. All right, he gets in position, second down from the 29. Rhodes flanking Manning. Steps up over the head of Dallas Clark. And you see Warren was in the backfield. Just like that third down coming. Well that, that long pass Jim what it did it allowed the Patriots to bring in three fresh pass rushers and a little bit of pressure. Pate Manning football kind of squirts out of his hand and it's off target. Tully Banta Kane of the Patriots lined up as a down lineman. Third down, a little flick, and a first. That's Rhodes holding on to it. And Deck right after he got the grab. Alexander, pickup of 11. Alexander hit him hard, but he held on. With 30 seconds to go in the half, Manning steps up and finds Clark at the six. Another first. First and goal to go, and now he uses that first timeout. Think about that third down play from the 12 to Reggie Wayne that kept yes. this going. You know, and, you know, and, and I said it so many times. You can win without being great on third down, but that means you got to have a lot of big plays on first and second. Well, that's not going to happen as much in this game today because we have two good teams. So third down is going to be important. Well, it's first down, first and goal to go with 24 seconds to go in the first half, and they run it. And without any good outcome, it's Rhodes with Vrabel on the tackle and a loss of two and another quick timeout, leaving them with one. And Vrabel telling us last night about how quiet it is when Manning's out there, and they like it. They've been able to pick off his signals a few times through the years. And of course, he can't do that at home because the New England Patriot fans are very loud. Second and goal from the eight. Manning backpedaling now throwing it to Clark and it was right there. James Sanders stuck a hand in. Peyton Manning does a good job buying himself some extra time retreating away from the blitz. But Mike Vrabel is coming free at him and falls down. Oh, and Sanders has his arm right between Dallas Clark's. James Sanders kind of stumbling. 
But all defensive backs know if you stick your hand between both of theirs, you got a good chance of knocking it down. So third and goal with 15 seconds. Looking left, lobbing it left for Wayne, and will this draw a flag? Yes. Not from the official to your left, but the back judge comes over and says, I saw it. There's no foul on the play. The receiver, the defensive player, tangled their feet, and both players were looking and playing for the ball. By rule, it's just an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Well, there's nothing Tony Dungy can do. On the outside, Reggie Wayne. Oh, nice move. It's tangling of the feet. And when the feet tangle, that is incidental contact. That was a pretty good shot from that angle there, Jim. It does just look like their feet come together. And Ellis Hobbs did not. He has his hand on him, but that is not a penalty. Now Dungy has called a timeout. And uh, Peyton Manning making an appeal to the sideline that he would like to go ahead and bypass the field goal. What do you think about this? I mean, would you... Oh, no. You, forego it? You kick the field goal. There's no question. Tony Dungy, I think, calls a timeout just to argue his point. But you kick the field goal, you make it 21 to 6, and the Indianapolis Colts get the football when we start the second half. Yep, Vinatieri coming out for a try from 26 yards. Field goal try, 26 yards. Snow to snap it, Smith to hold it. Oh, and he got it down just in time. A little bobble, but now 10 for 10 in the postseason. But that's six full quarters without finding the end zone for Indianapolis in the postseason. Jim, you talked about this last week, that last field goal. We saw a tremendous catch. Oh, no laces, just keep them where they are. And Hunter Smith doesn't, doesn't panic. And Adam Vinatieri says, let me just keep my routine going. Keep the rhythm, and he makes it. Have you ever seen so much attention in one stretch as we have for the last few weeks on the holder? I mean, it's become the postseason of holders. So that's now number 10. That sets a record in one postseason. In the second half, the Colts get the football again. Yep, they'll be receiving. That was an 80-yard drive, again, mustering only a field goal. I keep thinking back to the last time New England was here it was back in November of 2003 and the Patriots led in the third quarter by three touchdowns 31 to 10 Browns just falls on it Indianapolis came back to tie that game at 31 all and then the Patriots ended up winning 38 34 in a thriller with a goal line stand at the end Willie McGinnis tackling Edger and James but it was at one time the last time they were here New England was up 21. Are you asking me if it's is it possible today. I guess so. Well yeah it is. I think we saw that in that last drive. You know there, there are a lot of options now for the Indianapolis Colts in the second half. Do they come out and do they try to speed the game up and give themselves more plays more opportunities and maybe wear out the New England Patriots. Just a kneel down and they'll go to the locker room with a 21 to 6 lead. Kostowski again with a good kick, two yards deep. Wilkins and hammered by Larry Izzo at the 24. And Seymour hobbled by an early ankle sprain in this one. Still out there. Rhodes the running back. And Colvin was waiting for him. Picks up two yards, and Larry Izzo three times has made the Pro Bowl as a special teams player because of plays like that. Started with the Miami Dolphins, now with the New England Patriots, and when that's your main role, Jim, when it starts to slip, you're in trouble, but it has not slipped with Larry Izzo. Second down, we'll call it eight. Now Manning throwing, and it's over to Harrison, bumped out by Samuel. We'll see the spot right at the first down mark. First half numbers, the 85 yards on the ground for the Patriots. Two non-offensive touchdowns. A fumble recovery. Does not count as an offensive touchdown. And then you've got the interception returned by Samuel. And the crowd, you hear them in an uproar because they didn't like the spot. And Manning hated it also. 
Guys are not asking for a well, the measurement. They know it's got to be on the other side of the yard marker. And try to get it with Rhodes. He does. So a must. Picks up four. How about Eric Alexander tonight? The linebacker who's seeing the bulk of the work at the position that Tully Banta Kane has been starring at him late going in the season. Jim, they're moving him all around. Alexander now on the inside. We got Roosevelt Colvin and Mike Vrabel to the outside. So what it does, it puts a little more speed in the defense of the New England Patriots. One thing that they probably were worried about. And they stretch it out with Rhodes. Rhodes makes the move to pick up about 10. Reggie Wayne, Tarek Glenn helping free him. One thing you've noticed, or I've noticed all year long about the Indianapolis Colts, they're much more patient with their offense. They're willing to stay with the run longer. And they're not always trying to push it down the field and make those plays. And this year, they probably ran it even more trying to protect their defense and getting back in rhythm with these runs. Yep, that last run good enough for a first down. And that throw by Peyton Manning to the sideline. So a good start. Again, it's Rhodes, who had a very big second half last week at Baltimore, gained 52 yards, really going almost the entire second half instead of a die, who was shaken up with well, a shoulder injury in that one. It's been a long time since her last touchdown. Since the Kansas City Chiefs. 102 minutes. As we mentioned, 20 drives. Maybe this will be the breakthrough one. Second down and eight. That's kind of how you're counting time with your time with me, right? <laughs> no, I'm relishing it. A couple more weeks. And that's a good fake to Rhodes. Does it free in the secondary? Yes, a receiver. It is Harrison. And for so many years, Manning just with those exquisite play action fakes. Top of your screen. Marvin Harrison, you got to honor it that time again. Asante Samuel, two things. They're going to run deep and run to the middle of the field, which we saw a couple times in the first half, or they're going to run deep and come down along the sideline, which they love to do, and they're the best in the NFL when it comes to throwing those kind of passes. That game 13 now with the New England 38. Back to Rhodes on first down. Banging bodies. And the ball that is squirt out at the end, they rule him down after a five-yard pickup. I think back to Tony Dungy in our meeting with him on Friday, and one of the keys, he said, was to weather the first quarter, it, to be able to adapt to whatever Bill Belichick's game plan was. He knew they would come in with some wrinkle they didn't plan for, but that first quarter and the early minutes of the second quarter, it was all New England. Well, they definitely showed him on both sides, but... Two good drives in a row by the Colts. And second down, five to go. Wayne trying to pluck it out of the air, and it's batted down by Hobbs. Well, that's the play the Indianapolis Colts run. It's their number one play where they send the inside receiver, that time it's Dallas Clark, down the field, and the outside receiver underneath. The Patriots know it. That time they were aggressive with it, but you got to be careful because they'll fake it and go long and try to score a touchdown. Heady play by Hobbs as Wayne did not pull it into his body soon enough, and it goes incomplete. And it's a third and five. And the die back in the game. And Manning with time. A good catch. Reggie Wayne with a first down near the 20. Bruski defending. They had the perfect defense on to stop it. Teddy Bruski's going to be to the inside. There it comes. And the defensive back was following him. But Reggie Wayne so quick at going in, stopping and coming back out. Even though there were two defenders there, he's still wide open. So yet another first down for Indianapolis. We call it from the 21. The snap just in time and a little dump pass. Nice move. Rhodes escaping Brewski's hit. 
And Eric, Eric Alexander able to bring him down, but first a gain of four. Brady trying to stay loose. You know, the Colts, the first four possessions of the game, managed only four first downs. Now they've got, in the last two drives, ten first downs. So it's clicking now. And second down and six. Rifles it to Moorhead. And they'll have first and goal to go from about the nine. From the outside, here he comes underneath Dallas Clark and watch the inside defender. They know that here it comes. They try to get off. Roosevelt Coven did. Tried to leave right, Dallas Clark and help yeah, out wait. outside. Still not quick enough. Peyton Manning saw it and drilled it in there. All right, they got it inside the 10 in the last minute of the first half. Had to settle for the field goal. They call run on first and goal from the nine, and the die gets near the five yard line. Well, when you look at this Patriots defense, Jim, they were sixth overall. That means total yards. But I said it earlier second in the NFL in points allowed because they do play a lot of this. They bend, but they excel when you get inside the 10 yard line on second and goal another run it's a die straight ahead driving and then pushed back by Sanders then and back after a die got within the one I would think just inside the one we get Jeff Saturday on Wilfrick good block inside well what a hit by Sanders keeps him out good job by Peyton Manning quick snap count Third and goal from a yard out. Manning diving for it, and the football is it across? We're done. We're done. They're still looking in. Touchdown. Well, you can see the emotion, the energy this is putting back into the Colts. That's a lot of plays for this New England defense, too. Right over Saturday, right over Lilja. And the Colts storm out of the locker room with a touchdown drive. Not easy to run a quarterback sneak against those two guys inside. Look at the Patriots line up flooding that one side. Extra point is good. And it's a one possession game. Just what Tony Dungy said going into the locker room was his hope for the first drive of that third quarter. They did it. You know, Peyton Manning did not have a rush touchdown in 2003, four or five, but that's now five on this season. And we'll be seeing Brady and the Patriots, and they have been inactive for a long time. That long drive at the end of the first half by the Colts that led to a field goal, just one kneel down. That's all they've had. And it's Maroney. And a huge stick by Daryl Reed. Eight minutes to go in the third. And the momentum is shifting. 29 of the last 30 plays. Only a kneel down play to close out the first half. It's how long it's been since the Brady offense has tried to execute. And this place is charged. Needless to say, as Brady just lofts it out of bounds. I don't know if Tom Brady was trying to change the play. It looked like he was. If he did, it was not a good decision. After how the Colts have kept the football and the crowd's back into it, you need some running plays to settle them down. On second and ten. And Falk able to shake away from the first hit. That was Dwight Freeney who almost got him for a loss, but it gains eight. Kevin Falk does so much for this offense. He comes in. Of course, he's going to run the football on third downs, 
He is a tremendous blocker for Tom Brady when the defense blitzes. That time, nobody blocking Dwight Freeney. They expect him to go up the field. He almost makes the adjustment and gets the tackle. Third and two. The stop here in this place will explode again. Brady with pressure, able to spin away and get the completion to Evans. And because of the second effort, he has stopped short of the first. He's bounced back away from near the first down yardage. Bethea with the last hit, and they will have to punt. The style of defense that they play, they watch the quarterback. So they're looking at Tom Brady, and when they see the football thrown, look how they react. Even when you break a tackle, there's always somebody else ready to bring you down. Sauerbrunn standing at the 10. Colts trying to set up a return. Wilkins from the 16. And finally decked by Dave Thomas, the rookie backup tight end. 58 yard Thunderfoot by Sauerbrunn. Colts spread it out. Maybe they think they got the pass rush tired. You think you could be more aggressive? Fake uh, handoff to Rhodes, and they go to Clark. Clark open in the middle, and he's all the way out to the 50. Picks up 25. Here's what they do. Dallas Clark's going to come down the middle. What's the defensive player? It's as, as they see fake, it makes them pull up and stop and look at the lane it creates down the oh, field man. for Dallas Clark. One of their favorite plays. Fake the draw, throw it over the middle. Roosevelt Colvin was shaken up on that last play. He's on the sideline. It's Rhodes. Springing free and able to keep his balance to the 31 yard line. They are just ripping off big yards now. That goes for 19. Jim, they got this defense reeling. It's big and it can't tire out. And you said it during the break, just like last week. Rhodes comes in and he just seems more determined, more powerful, and he's making big plays. Already with 43 yards on only eight carries. Most of that coming in this third quarter. They have the Patriots on their heels. Trying to get it all back in a hurry. Manning open and dropped by the sure-handed Hall of Famer Marvin Harrison. And Marvin Harrison's going to walk off the field. We showed you their favorite play. They run it all the time. Marvin Harrison coming underneath a receiver going down the field and I don't know if he jammed a finger or oh, something in the eyes. Last second subbing by the Patriots who have Rashad Baker lined up at safety with Artrell Hawkins out. And Colvin went out a couple of plays ago. Trying to put in some fresh bodies as well as address some injuries. Second down and 10 and Rhodes. And it'll set up third and about six. And uh, Solomon Wilcox, what do you have? Oh, Jim, right now the Patriots are having to substitute in a feverish kind of tempo right now. They really do have guys who are starting to wear down. We told you they have many players battling the flu all week long. Roosevelt Colvin just came off. He's battling cramps. And Arturo Hawkins, he's battling fatigue right now. You saw 32. Thank you, Solomon. 32 Baker. Seldom used, but he's out there in the secondary for New England. And Manning with the flag drawn Seymour pointing across the way Colts right back at him. I'll tell you if it's against the Patriots I'm not sure it'd be enough for the first it'd be very close but still it'd be just third and uh, half a yard maybe at the most. Neutral zone infraction 93 defense five yard penalty. First down. Carollo didn't even measure. He moved the chain, so it is enough for the first off the penalty. He thinks he's you. <laughs> first down and ten, and the Colts got an eagle eye. Keep on moving. And the 22. It's a die back in there, and the rookie only for a couple. He had a thousand yard season, and he was the number one rookie rusher in the league this year. Only one that cracked that thousand yard barrier. 
Second and seven coming up. Look at the time of possession since late second quarter. Domination by the Colts since that point. And they would love to keep it going and finish off these 19 yards. Manning to Wayne and the defender had his back turned. That will be pass interference on Ellis Hobbs. It'll set up the Colts at the one yard line. I'll tell you, there's an interesting, you totally agree with this call, Phil, no doubt, huh? Absolutely. Face guarding. Ellis Hobbs jumps up, just tries to get in the way of Reggie Wayne. Does not see the football, does not play it. Easy call. It's going to be an interesting decision. Assuming they get this one yard, would they go ahead and try to tie it now? No. Or go ahead and just kick the PAT and beware of that dangerous numbers game that you can try to play catch up the rest of the way. I knew that's where you're going and I anticipated and no I think you kicked the extra point. First the touchdown a must as Manning rolls out. He has Klecko open and Klecko is in for the touchdown. Dan Klecko a former Patriot. Catches a second touchdown on the season. Caught one in the last regular season game against Miami. He's a defensive player who comes in in short yardage. Peyton Manning just told Bill Carollo where he wants the football. And Jim, here's why I say I wouldn't go for it. You kick it, it's 21 to 20. So if the Patriots happen to score a touchdown, you miss this, it's 28 to 19. That's two scores to get you back. But they are going to instead eschew that. PAT thought that you have and try to ride the wave of momentum and tie it right here at the four minute mark in the third. Well, he raised his hands and this place went quiet. Harrison back in there, lined up wide to the right. Now moving in motion, taking it to the short side for the tie, the pass. It is caught and the game is tied at 21. An incredible comeback. The Manning family, Eli Manning in that suite up there with Archie Manning celebrating. They've come back from 18 down in 11 minutes on the game clock to tie the AFC title game. What a catch by Harrison on the two point conversion. And Klecko over to give him a nod. He caught the touchdown. As Vinatieri puts the leg into it, Hobbs from a yard out, yard deep. And Hobbs with that Vinatieri gets by him and he's racing down the sidelines. Giordano finally bounces him out. And you talk about shifting the momentum right back. That's exactly what they've done with Ellis Hobbs. I was going to say there is going to be a lot of pressure on this New England offense, but most of it was just lifted. And it's a nice job up the middle and then this little move reversing field just enough to get a couple of the Colt defenders out of their lane and good hustle by Gio Donald to stop the touchdown. They mark him out at the 21. It's an 80 yard return. Finally, Giordano was able to cut him off with the angle, but Brady and the Patriots set up at the 21 with the game tied at that number. Maroney feeling the heat right away and able to dodge a couple, but still unable to get back to the line of scrimmage. They're so active, the defensive line for the Indianapolis Colts. They run players and switch places when the ball is snapped. They're called games by the defensive lineman. So it confuses the run blocking by the offense and that's why they have a lot of no game runs against their defense. They spread it out including Heath Evans wide to the left. Unusual spot to see him and now he's going to shift back over to the right side 
And second and 11. Brady, middle, open. It's Gaffney. And the Patriots have a first and goal to go at the five. Well, the Patriots are so confused, they confuse themselves and the defense. But to the backside, nobody on top of Jabbar Gaffney. Nobody covered him, nobody in his way. Tom Brady sees it and throws a strike. Yeah, strike with a lot of zip. Well, the formation spreading the offense out. That's what confused the Colts defense. Corey Dillon back in. First and goal. Dillon. Not this time. That play worked in the first half for a touchdown from seven yards out. This one shut down for a loss of one. Sometimes when you watch this defense, it isn't hard to believe what you said. They gave up over 100 yards against everybody this season. And but first team in 22 years. Yeah, but it's just built on. We asked the coaches so many times, Jim, and what do they say? Ron Meeks, it's about hustle, doing your job, playing fast, and going all out. And it really is a big part of what they do. Second down, goal to go. Brady with the general rollout. And back of the end zone, a dropped touchdown. A drop touchdown. How did Rache Caldwell not handle that one? Mathis had Brady on the move. Well, he does. Oh, boy. The eyes did not go down. The catch is almost so easy. You change what you do normally. You try to protect it, and it goes right through your arms. Caldwell, who had that big 49-yard catch last week to set up the game-winning field goal at San Diego. Third and goal. And Brady again. Move right. Try to plant the feet and fire back at the end zone. And did he get the feet down? It could be ruled a push out. It is. Touchdown. Jabbar Gaffney. You cannot challenge it. It's ruled a push out, so it is a touchdown. And it was a good job by the officials working together. Would he come down inbounds? One foot. It looks like the second one would have. Let me ask you this. Was he out of bounds before he launched into the air? That you can challenge. He, uh, he may have had his heels out of play, out of the end zone. Well, Tony Dungy is waiting to see a replay, and this might be one. You just might have to go ahead, take a guess, throw the flag out there, and see if there's something where he was out of bounds before he caught the ball. Well, that's the big question. Was Gaffney residing out of bounds? And they thrown the challenge flag. Was he out of bounds when he leaped into the air? It happened so fast, Jim. I thought when he was running across the back, maybe one of his feet did go out of bounds. Or was the football bobbled? Indianapolis is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a catch and the force out. We'll review the play to see if the, if the receiver maintained possession of the ball out of bounds. At the same time, can they review yes. the whole thing about wh it, whether or not he launched from out of bounds? Yes, they can. They, everything is in play there, Jim. Since he is taken to the ground, when you're taken to the ground as a receiver, you must have control of the football all the way through. As he goes to the ground, couldn't see anything there. You know, Bill Corolla headed Come on, Eagle under the hood. A, does he step out and Here's before? the big question. Watch the back heels. Oh, boy, that is close. You were down there inspecting that before the game. I, I, you really were. We, we, we did with Steve Tasker talking about how it can come down to just a thread, if you will. But, it, you know, you don't have the perfect down-the-line angle right there, but you would think that's pretty close to the heels right there. Nope. Well, maybe you had them elevated. He did. 
Now there's the re review of oh, the and ball, comes, and he yep. looked like he held on to it. He secures it. Yep. Remember, when you contact takes you to the ground, you must hold the football all the way through the process and basically just get up with it. Boy, looking at that one right there, I say touchdown. Well, let's wait. There's a football move. He has his arm under it, his hand. Well, again, the call on the field is touchdown. And here's another piece of evidence. Jim, I think you're right. His heels were up in the air. And yeah, that left one is the one you have the question with. And I tell you, he was, he was he knew where he was, and he was going to get that second foot down as he was coming. You could already see the move that he was trying to get it down. And Jabbar Gaffney. Here you go, Phil. The, your question, though, about holding on to it all the way to the ground and maintaining it, I think that's been cleared up. After reviewing the play, it's been determined the receiver caught and remained with possession throughout the down. Therefore, touchdown. Touchdown. Indianapolis is charged with the timeout. Touchdown, Jabbar Gaffney. All set up by a monster kick returned by Ellis Hobbs. Gaffney, who had no catches before this drive, snaring two on the series, including the touch. There's a good job. You could even see Jabbar Gaffney looking down to see where his feet were and where he had to get his second foot. Tony Dungy was still arguing that call even after it was validated, and that's twice now in that end zone. He has not liked the result. Yeah, the crowd's going crazy. You hear the noise. They're watching the big board, and they think that Jabbar Gaffney's heels are on the out-of-bounds lines line, but we showed it. It looks like his heels were up in the air. And, and Dungy was pointing at the white out-of-bounds paint as Gostowski makes it a seven-point lead. In less than seven minutes, we've had 22 points scored here. And New England regains the lead after relinquishing what at one time was a 23 21 to 3 advantage. Now up seven. Wow. And ball fielded beautifully. But fumbled. fumbled and the ball back in the field of play. That was Charlie Johnson. He snagged it with one hand. It looked like Klecko fell on it. Got hit by Andrews and the ball came out. And it was out anyway. Izzo tried to put it back in the field of play. Now was if you're wondering was Gaffney ever at any point on that route was he ever out of bounds and then came back in which you can't do. And the answer is he had awareness all the way. The only question that's the, what Dungy was arguing was that back heel. On the end line. From the 33 trying to come back out. And keep it moving. Manning to Rhodes who darts ahead for nine maybe ten. Kelly Banta Kane in on the quarterback and Utech shut shake it up. So we'll have an injury timeout at the 43 yard line final minute of the third quarter. Play action fake and again underneath they go with Rose who dives for yet another first down and already back into New England territory 13 yards. This is what you saw so many times this year when you watch the Indianapolis Colts the defense playing safe they're all dropping back and Peyton Manning will throw it short and look what happens they catch those short ones and they get first downs. Patriots 44 Rhodes with 74 total yards in this quarter and that Patriot defense still without the services of Colvin and Hawkins and into the secondary knocked down by you see him Baker who's in there replacing Artrell Hawkins He's missed the last half of this quarter.
That's going to run out the third. 28 21. What a game. The fourth quarter coming up. And the winner to take on Chicago Super Bowl 41 in South Florida. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Second down and one for Manning and the Colts. Driving yet again. And they pick up the first after a horrendous start here through the first quarter and a half. They corrected things and they haven't slowed down. That was a very busy quarter, the third. It was total points. Look at Indianapolis, two 76 yard touchdown drives. And what gave the Patriots some momentum and some hope was that kickoff return. But here come the Colts marching again. From the 32, with another first down. The die is in there instead of Rhodes. And the pass, looking for Clark on the sideline. Did he get the feet down? Yes, he did. What a catch. Dallas Clark and the Colts have a first and goal to go just inside of the 10. Clean catch gets both feet down. Dallas Clark against Tully Banta Kane. That's a big time advantage for Indianapolis's offense. He goes for 23. Back to Rhodes. Sees a little crease and takes it to the five. Gain of four. Everybody in the Patriots walking around, hands on their hips, taking their time. Some of the defensive linemen are very late getting down their stances before the ball is snapped. They've got Hawkins back in now, the starter at free safety. And a movement. Jarvis Green, it appears, of the Patriots. Or was he drawn off by Tarek Glenn? First signal was encroachment against New England. Neutral zone infraction, 97 defense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. It was green. Neutral zone, trying to create a false start. I could hear the little sharp snap count by Peyton Manning. And you know, too, Jim, I, I, I have to believe fatigue. Hard to concentrate when you get extremely tired. And you, we've said it, it's very hot in this building, like a sauna. I'll tell you, that penalty goes for two and a half yards and sets up second and goal. Certainly far more options from here. In a congested part of the field, and Rhodes trying to squirt in. Did the ball come out? And the, the Colts trying to say, yes, they've recovered now a fumble for a touchdown. It's Jeff Saturday right back at you, they say, to New England. Rhodes fumbles, and the center recovers. How many times have you seen offensive linemen score twice in the same game? Not the same one, but one on each side. <laughs> Rhodes, the ball's clearly coming out. That's not something that New England would win in a reversal if they tried to challenge. And right on the goal line, Boy. Saturday has the recovery and the touch. Jeff Saturday actually getting his hands on it and picking it up. <laughs> Big guys fall on it. For the tie, Vinatieri, 28 all. Saturday coming up big on a Sunday, and the Pro Bowl center becomes the second lineman to score in this game. Actually, three as Dan Klecko, a defensive lineman, caught a touchdown. There's Mankins, who started this bizarre odyssey with the game's first touchdown on a recovery of a Maroney fumble. Big kick. What will Hobbs do this time? Able to get by some initial contact, and again, it's Giordano who had bumped him out on the 80-yarder. Closes the deal at the 27. All right, Solomon Wilcox from the sidelines. Jim and Phil, you guys mentioned how hot it is inside the RCA Dome. After that last touchdown drive by the coach, there were several defenders for the Patriots who came off and were cramping up. Vince Wilfork, he has a lower calf muscle. It's a cramp there. And then the hamstrings are cramping up on both Roosevelt Coleman and the other linebacker, Eric Alexander. So these guys are really starting to struggle in terms of fatigue. All right, thank you, Solomon. Belichick told us that the San Diego game took a real toll on all of us. That's what he said. Red-eyeing it back Sunday, a couple bouts with the flu. 
They weren't themselves until at least Thursday as Watson gets cut under by Brackett, but it picks up a gain of about five. New England needs first downs to give their defense a chance to recover on the sideline. Second and five. And a draw, Maroney. And he is knocked back for another loss. He has had a number of times today where he's been greeted early. This time by Dwight Freeney. Six weeks ago, if you ran a draw against Indianapolis Colts, it was like guaranteed to get 10 yards. Today, it's worked a couple times for the Patriots, but Dwight Freeney, the defensive line, now reacting very well to those draw plays. Can you imagine if they stop him here, force the three and out, and that defense, as fatigued as it is, battling cramps, would have to come right back out in a stretch where they can't stop him, it seems. Maroney with blockers in front, and they close in and keep him short of the first. Colts will get the football back. This is one of the things that Ron Meeks, their coordinator, talked about, is how all the stuff that was thrown underneath, they were playing faster against Baltimore and able to stop them short of getting the first on plays like this. Jim, we talked about it. That's what they are, they're built to do. You catch it, we tackle you before you get the first down. The Patriots knew it. That's why we said it was so big. Oh, a big. So big of a factor in the outcome of this game. Big, big moment here. Bob Sanders, who again was good for only four games this year because of a knee injury. And the real reason why this team, if you ask anyone around here, has been playing faster, feeding off his energy. He is down and clutching that left knee. And uh, quickly to his feet, though. It was a fake screen left, and then they come back to the right, and Bob Sanders all the way across the field. Boy, he flies around. Absolutely flies around. Demond Sanders is really his name. He said everybody butchered it when he was a kid, so he said to his mom, I'd like something easier. She said, how do you like the name Bob? He says, we'll go with it. It's nowhere on his birth certificate. Bob or Robert, you won't find it. It's Demond, but you know him as Bob. And they know him as a difference maker around here. Sauerbrunn's last punt was a big one, 58 yards, and another beauty. Wilkins, he'll make the catch at the six. And able to take it to the 21 and hold on to it. Well, they've been chasing. They've been playing catch up since the first quarter. They pulled even twice. And you see their last four possessions. The yardage fill ends up to 299 yards over the last four drives. Because well, I told you how far it was. <laughs> <laughs> now with a play action fake. Manning going for the long ball and a receiver is down with no flag. And Hobbs ran after uh, the deep ball trying to see if he can make a pick. It was intended for Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne on the outside, top of your screen. Again, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and he just runs right into the ground. Yeah, just as he did on that one end zone throw that was hotly debated. Not when he tripped himself you know in the first do? half. Got to get shoes that work. Heard that a lot. Can't yeah. slip and fall. Second down and ten. And Manning falls. It's unbelievable. Well, I mean, you would think How many that Wayne people? and Manning would know the shoes to wear here at home. So many times. This might have been a die, though. It, it yeah, was. they did. They stubbed toes. Joseph Adai and Peyton Manning hit toes. But we saw Mike Vrabel fall down with nobody around him. And, ooh, boy, that is hard. and That can hurt. Third down. A long 15 to go up in the air and Wayne could have come down with that. He had boxed out Chad Scott. And just when the Colts got what they wanted the chance to finally have possession to try to drive down and take control of the game. The drive ends with a thud. Not only that it's a blitz. The football does not come out of Peyton Manning's hand. Very clean. It's wobbly. But saying all that Jim because there's a blitz it's just one on one. It's 
It's up for grabs, and the Colts had a big chance of catching it. Hunter Smith with Troy Brown back there, backpedaling back, back inside the 30. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. And Brown is down at the 42. Keith O'Neill on the coverage after a 58-yard punt, 14-yard run back. Well, you look at Tom Brady and you think about a fourth quarter, a game on the line in Brady's history in moments like this. And Corolla, a long discussion about that flag. There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Illegal shift, 26, that penalty is declined. Number 36, personal foul, face mask, while the kick was in the air. The receiving team will keep the ball, will attack 15 yards Ooh. at the end of the end Wow, of the spot. and that'll put the Patriots in great shape. And you saw Peyton Manning for a moment there, Phil, working on his thumb. There he is. It might explain why that football came out of his hand. Exactly, after the previous play where he stumbled, he and a die got crossways. Dexter Reed called for the face mask. Manning looking through some pictures. He was grimacing an awful lot during that break while trying to test that right thumb. But after the face mask call, the Patriots again start on a short field. Zipped with precision to Caldwell for a first down. Now here's the pass on third down and it looked like his hand on the follow through hit the helmet of Tarek Glenn. Now look at him looking back at Sorge here. Be ready. Wow. Can you imagine the fourth quarter and he wouldn't be able to finish in a tie game or a close game for the right to go to the Super Bowl. We'll see. That pass to Caldwell good for 17 and now Brady again with extra heat on that one finds Gaffney down to the 14 two plays in a row Jim watch Tom Brady he knows the defense is watching him he's going to make a quick look to the left a little fake just to open up the hole just a little bit and you said it he lasers it in there and the Colts know that he likes to look off especially against them because they read the quarterback so much but it's hard not to react and if you react react just a little bit that opens up the hole and he makes a good throw two plays and into the red zone with nine minutes to go jumps up hits Brown flag down and Brown is dropped at the six. When you talk about big plays on special teams in this one, Phil, let's check the flag with Bill Corolla. Illegal shift, number 10, offense. Coming out of the huddle, number seven. Five yard penalty, first down. And that's on Gaffney, but they had the special teams play on the 80 yard run back just after the game had been tied at 21 that led to the touchdown pass to Gaffney. And then on the punt, the face mask call here by Dexter Reed. Setting up Brady and company again. Those are the kind of mistakes that are so crucial that doomed the Chargers a week ago. Nobody's covering the receiver up top. He is the top wide open. See it. Nobody. Absolutely wide open on the right side. He it's sees him well, finally. And, and he, he drops, drops it again for the second time in this half. I mean, there was no one within 15 yards. No one adjusted. And it stood there forever, and they were making up the top. Nobody lines up with Rache Caldwell. And they don't see him even the play starts. Finally, Bethea gets over there. Two easy ones in this one. Hard to explain. Second down and 15. 
Comes the pressure. Open Evans. And he's to the 10. It'll be third down and about six to go. And Caldwell. I mean, this is a guy that led them in receiving this year with 61 catches. And look at all the Patriots trying to signal over here. If they had snapped that a little earlier, they would have even had a wider gap over there. Hey, look at Shea Caldwell can't believe it. Second time today, he dropped a wide open pass. Crucial, third and seven. They're bringing heat. Ball lobbed into the end zone, and it was intended for Caldwell. No flag. Kelvin Hayden in his second year out of Illinois makes the defensive play. Jim, here comes the blitz. The Patriots. Little contact there. Yeah, a lot of hand fighting, but did it have something to do with catching the ball? And they determined, no, it does not. So he gets away with it, Kelvin Hayden. Brings out Gostowski, the rookie from Memphis. Six for six in the playoffs. This from 28 yards. The Venetary takeover drives it through. For the 31 28 lead midway fourth we'll be back to see what Manning's hand how good it is. We are back and Gostowski who hit the game winner last week has given the Patriots the lead there he is. And Manning during that timeout again took a couple of practice snaps with Saturday. Still concerned you could see. All over about that hand that thumb. Wilkins jogs up to the 10. And takes a big hit from Baker, the former Minnesota Viking defensive back. And this looks to be the play where it all happened, just on the follow through throw. That's the one that floated that Wayne looked like he may have had a play on it, Phil, but it did float through the air, and that's why. Well, of course, we've been watching him the whole time, Jim, and he has not stopped moving that thumb. So I'm sure it's sore, but he just doesn't want to stiffen up. That's why he's trying to keep it loose. <laughs> Grable looked like he was poaching, backs off, and then gets back in there. And the throw up the field. Clark wide open at the 50. He's at the 40. Cuts back to the left to the 30. And the Colts are all the way down to the New England 25. 52 yards. Good movement in the pocket by Peyton Manning. Ty Warren gets free immediately. And the defense, they get caught looking in the backfield. And the rest of the offensive unit sprints all the way down the field to try to hurry up, catch the Patriots before they can substitute in mass. Hawkins was looking at Peyton Manning. And Rhodes trying to take advantage of that tired defense. Up ahead for five behind Ryan Lilja. When everybody plays this Colts offense, when you play the receiver that's in the slot away from the tackle, the, like Dallas Clark did the last time, you always assume it's a pass. Play pass until you know it's a run. Then you turn around and try to make a tackle. Second down and five. And fake again. Manning firing sideline. Wayne coming back for it. And that was well defended by Ellis Hobbs. Well, good job. Bill Belichick told Solomon Wilcox at halftime he was happy with his corners how they played. Didn't see any concern with that throw did you in no, terms no of what kind of velocity he had in the last couple throws but overall these defensive backs on the outside a lot of pressure on them they still doing a pretty good job. Third and five they try to run for it they don't go to the air and Rhodes is stopped after a gain of two it'll bring out Vinatieri. With a field goal try of about 35 yards to tie it. And you go, well, how can they run it on third and five when you have Peyton Manning as your quarterback? 
Well, because they thought it was going to work. You're trying to catch the defense off guard. And when it works, it looks great. And when it doesn't, well, you get second guessed. Again, never missed. Not only as a Colt, but even when he came here as a Patriot. This is a 36 yarder to tie the game with five and a half minutes remaining. And the snap a little shaky, but the kick is good. That's a couple of times in this game. Hunter Smith has done a terrific job of getting it in place so Vinatieri can motor on through. We saw it last week. We've seen it a couple times today, Jim. Good job by Hunter Smith and Adam Vinatieri. Well, there's nothing he can do about it, so he just smooths his way right through another kick. Three for three today. Perfect in the playoffs. Low and inside. So we've had the game tied at three different points in this second half at 21, 28, and now 31. Well, Adam Vinatieri, high school quarterback, outside linebacker. Of course, he was a good soccer player, pole vaulter and track. And he says, what stopped my athletic career? I quit growing. So when I quit growing, he says, well, kicking's where I got to make it. Good athlete, shows it while he kicks the football. And this kick to the five in Hobbs. They've been making special teams plays, and he breaks another one. Hobbs dragged down at the 46. Every time there's a special teams play, the Patriots are performing. 41-yard run back. Finally, Rob Morris brought him down. But the lineman in this game, Alpha Moroni fumble. Logan Mankins opened the game scoring. And then Treco, the defensive player, the defensive lineman, catches one. And then the recovery for the Colts by Saturday. But the Colts keep allowing New England to start out these drives in excellent position. Teams get tired. It shows up in special teams, Jim. That's what we're seeing on these kicking, these kickoffs. This is what Brady lives for. 5.20 to go in the game. Tide lobs it. Graham has it. Somebody better touch him. And they do at the 30. Very athletic catch by Daniel Graham. And it goes for 25. And they're already in field goal range. Daniel Graham very alert. Knows he's not touched, so he keeps on rolling. Gets a couple extra yards. Coming up, we've got the Subway postgame show with the presentation of the Lamar Hunt Trophy to the AFC champions. Jim Plunkett, two-time Super Bowl winner and Super Bowl 15 MVP will be presenting the Lamar Hunt Trophy. J.B. Dan and Shannon and Boomer previewing Super Bowl 41 Subway postgame show. The fake, the toss, too tall for Gaffney. And Brady knows he had him. He did have him, Jim. In a big spot like this, the Colts are going to play run. Tom Brady's, they're playing run. He knows it. If they're playing run, I got probably a receiver outside that's open, and he misses him. Sideline and incomplete. That's Bethea who helped knock it out of the arms of Graham. And third and ten coming up. Well, Tom Brady gets rid of this football very quickly when he had a chance maybe to go down the field. But we said it from the beginning. Crowd noise, their pass rush, a quarterback knows. Get the football out of your hands. Manning stays loose. But they fail to advance it from here to be like a 47 yard field goal try. A draw, Evans. And Gary Brackett hits him first. How about that call? 
Bill Belichick is thinking about his young kicker. It's worked so far in this game. Very conservative call. But, again, the situation, not surprising. And the call does not upset me at all. Well, it's been the talk all season long about New England. What would happen when it counted when you had a rookie and not Benetieri? Well, this counts. 43 yards. This is that moment. Gostowski's kick. It's going to be good. <laughs> 349 to go on 34. 31 game but is this as some had said during a week oh it sounds like one of those last possession type games and certainly the way they're moving the football on both sides it could be just that good strong kick. Corey Dillon from the bench raised the hands for a moment and it says whoo. <laughs> well you know when your arms are that big that's hard work raising them up. But yes I'm sure you know Jim just the situation we saw early in the game where they went forward on fourth down you know the players there they're they're very cognizant of the situation they're in with their kicker their rookie kicker versus the Colts and Adam Benatieri. Three times the game has been tied and New England has gone back and taken the lead each time. We had referred in the first half when it was looking pretty dire for the Colts down 21 to 3 about how these two the last time they tangled at this dome it was a 31 10 lead by New England only to see Manning storm them back 31 all. Only to see New England win it in the end 38 34 it's the same type game. This kick flies all the way nine yards deep and they'll start at the 20. They have two timeouts. Remember they lost a timeout on the challenge. On the challenge. Well with the two timeouts two minute warning. If the Colts didn't pick it up on third down here early then they would punt it and try to stop New England's offense. Manning's got to be asking just one more time. Let's drive it down the field one more time like we did at the end of the first half. Blitz. All the way through the third and he just gets rid of it at the feet of Clark. It's kind of like last week Jim when we saw the San Diego defense when it comes to crunch time. Are you just going to sit back and think that the other team's just not going to get it done. No. You look at Peyton Manning's numbers He's done a pretty good job. Hold him 292. But if you want him to get off the field, you're going to have to take some chances as a defense. Second and 10. Manning throws falling back incomplete. Again, there was heavy pressure. Tully Banta Kane is crashing in. Well, two plays in a row. Look at all the guys at the line of scrimmage. He was able to beat a die and a die unable to hold him off. Yeah that's a tough matchup. Tully Banta Kane about 265 pounds as a linebacker slash defensive end just like Mike Vrabel like a lot of linebackers that have played for the New England Patriots. Third down and ten. Pressure at his feet pass. Broken up, broken up by Mickens, who reached in and denied Aaron Moorhead. You said it right. Pressure at his feet. That does not allow Peyton Manning to step into the throw. And because it's just a little soft, it gave Ray Mickens just enough time to come back and get in front of Moorhead and knock the pass down. Just got a hand on it. Well done by the former Jet. Boy. Three straight pressure defenses. Leonard Smith has uncorked a pair of 58 yarders. And this one, another big one. But Brown has running room. Spinning around and another nice special teams performance. As it's an 11 yard run back. 
Actually, 16 yard run back, 56 yard punt. Now Brady will just try to stay out there until the very end and close the deal. Colts with two timeouts and the two minute warning. And they have this record not only of 12 and 1, Brady and Belichick together, but when it comes to close calls, games decided by seven points or less, 8 and 0. That Colts defense much maligned during the entire season. They felt picked on even though the numbers don't lie. They felt their pride had been stepped on. There is a flag. Too many men in the huddle. Patriots had 12 guys in the huddle. A mini break. Too many players in the huddle on the offense. Five yard penalty. So uh, 15 yards to pick up the first now. Well, here's what happens. It's Evans trying to run off. Run off. Let's go. You're right. Four, eight, twelve. Here's one, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They come out throwing. And a catch is made. By Caldwell, spun down after a gain of seven. Marlon Jackson bringing him down. What do you expect you'll see here from the Patriots? Well, I just saw it, Jim. You know, especially after that penalty, you have to do something right from the start of the game. They said, throw it short, get rid of the football. They've been doing it. They've had moderate success. It was a good first down play. But the play calling, you have to stay aggressive. This crowd begging for its defense to give Peyton and the offense one more crack. Evans wide to the left. Second down and seven and Watson with the grab but still four yards to go for the third down. The ball kind of squirted out. Bethea running down the field but whistles ruling it down. Boy that is a dangerous dangerous pass. Nothing was easy all day long, and it will be nothing easy about this on third and four. He's got time and almost picked off by Sanders. Still, the Colts will get the ball back. He jumped right in front of Troy Brown. Troy Brown, second receiver, sets it down. Whoa. We said it. They love to read the eyes of the quarterback. Sanders has nobody to cover. He's floating free. And it was almost a game-ending interception. Tom Brady wanted Troy Brown to stay outside. Sauerbrunn. Beautiful. Wilkins, will he handle it inside the 10? He runs away from it, and it bounces in for the touchback. So they'll come out to the 20 with 217 to play. In regulation. Bob Sanders. What a difference when he's out there. Shaken up briefly in this second half, able to come back. How big was that illegal participation? No question. I know it changes everything after the fact, but still. You've seen it all day. We talked about it, third downs, but it's hard to get chunks of yardage against the Colts' defense. This could be the drive that would change so many things for Peyton Manning. Throwing. Man Reggie Wayne has the catch at the 31 for a first. Quick 11. Peyton Manning, you got to know now that they're going to try to pressure you. So just gear up for it and call the plays and make your decisions based on the fact that they're probably going to blitz. Peyton now over 300 yards with 2.12 to go. Here they come again. Picked up across the middle and Fletcher with Alexander on him. 
This kid Alexander certainly has had a prominent role in this game. Third year player from LSU teammate with Joseph Adai down there. Played for Nick Saban. And seeing a lot of action. One of those unexpected little twists in the game plan. Yep yep Mike Vrabel kind of hinted at it. And that's why we see Mike Vrabel outside where he is a much more effective player. The second and ten with 208. Backpedaling and launching long open is Fletcher. He makes the grab inside the 40. And he ran away from the aforementioned. There he is, Eric Alexander for 32 yards. Peyton Manning backpedals. He gives himself some space, that little bit of extra time, and he knows this time they're going to blitz. I'm going to look down the field. His best matchup, he found it. And they got an extra second. To run a play, here comes the blitz. Pass, Wayne digging in, taking off. And the ball comes out, he grabs it back. My goodness, Samuel says that could have done it. Suspended in air for a moment, and Reggie reels it back in. There is a flag. Wow. The Colts moving right down the field at the two minute warning. Here's the penalty on the outside. Tully Banticain puts his hand up on the helmet. Of Wouldn't have mattered this fumble. They would have still got the football back. But Reggie Wayne good recovery. One timeout for the Colts 153 to play. Three for the New England Patriots. The strength of their defense, what they're built on, is stopping inside the 20 scoring threats. Biggest 11 yards of Manning's career right here. And first down, a die. Driving the legs to the seven. Now you start wondering, is there any timeout strategy on the New England side? Oh, sure there is. But they're going to wait and see what happens in these situations. And the Colts, one of the reasons why they run it, to make time a factor in case they just have to kick the field goal to tie. Don't try to take as much time away as you can. So if you do tie it up with a field goal, the Patriots don't have enough time to win it in regulation. They can get a first at the one. Another running play. Jumping around a die and driving within two yards of the first. Here's where you think the New England Patriots would call a timeout. And they have. What a call this is. Well, you coming know, up. Jim, we were at practice on Friday, and they ran many, many plays from this area of the field because they knew it was going to be so important. And almost every time the touchdown or the scoring throw from Peyton Manning came on a receiver moving towards the middle and then breaking to the back of the end zone. I saw it at least six or seven times. Third and two from the three. Another running play. A die walks in for the touchdown. Colts have taken the lead for the first time in the AFC Championship game. When the Colts came out and they line up with the running back right behind Peyton Manning, you've got to be alert that it could be a run. A little misdirection run inside. Wide open. Easy touchdown run for Joseph Adai. And now to make the margin four. Vinatieri does so. Right down the middle. 32 second half points by Indianapolis. There was a 29 here at one time who went on to the Hall of Fame, Eric Dickerson. But there's a new 29 here, a rookie. And he has taken the Colts to the lead for the first time in this game. It took him 59 minutes. 
Well, some of these running plays, the blocking up front. Wondering about the Manning family, Phil. There's Eli right in center screen. Well, Eli pretty calm about it. But, Jim, it goes back to what Mike Brabel said it about this team. They're not finesse. They're precise. They can run it, and they can run it well in big spots. They did it last week against the Baltimore Ravens. In years past, that last run or that last play, it would have always been a pass. Tom Brady. Little meeting with his receivers, Gaffney and Caldwell. But watch out on the return. Hobbs has been a difference maker in this game a number of times setting up the Patriots. They're going to give him another chance to run with it from a yard deep. Down on the coverage. Not going to let him go anywhere this time. Group tackle at the 21. Well, the difference now is, Jim, time is a problem. It's a big problem. And you're going against the defense that doesn't give up big plays. He has to take a chance somewhere and gamble and try to make a big throw. He'll have two timeouts to work with. He's got the protection he needed. The pass incomplete. And maybe a little mix up. It was in the area of Caldwell. Well, we got two receivers, and they're both in the same area. But it's the defense that caused the mix up. Greeny trying to get in there. Brady fires, has Watson to the 40. 19 yards. And preserving the two timeouts. Taking a while to reset. Got to throw it down the field. Half minute to go. Left open is Evans in the middle of the field. And they'll call the quick timeout at the 44. Another 14 yards, and at this point, Brady knows he'll at least, at the very least, have a chance to toss a couple deep down the field toward the end zone. Well, Pete Manning on the sideline. It's never easy. Can you imagine this? After he got picked off by Samuel, and his team is down 21 to 3, that they'd be in this position with 24 seconds to go. You have your arch rival here. The Colts and the Patriots so much to exercise here in one night and to do it coming back from 18 down. Can they finish it though. If you get a big game here Jim you immediately call timeout so you can get two to three shots into the end zone. I don't even think Peyton's going to watch. Intercepted. Colts are going to the Super Bowl. Marlon Jackson. Marlon Jackson Roman free and he did sneak a peek at the big board their first rounder of a year ago Marlon Jackson stepping in and making the pick and a kneel down we have just witnessed the largest comeback ever 
in a conference championship game. Tony Dungy will join his great friend Lovey Smith at the Super Bowl on this historic day. The first two African American head coaches ever to make it to the Super Bowl. And friends at that, two distinguished gentlemen, and they will meet for the Lombardi Trophy in South Florida. And what a way for Peyton Manning and the Colts to go, Jim. You said it. The last minute drive, the historic comeback, all the questions. What a way to answer it. What a special game, though. I mean, it was at one time 21 to 3. The Patriots, again, were playing in plus territory on a short side. Had a first down inside the 20 when that was called off because of a pass interference penalty on Troy Brown. They ended up getting nothing out of that drive. And the Colts found their rhythm just before the half, just in time to kick a field goal and then continue in the second half. Peyton Manning for all the naysayers who said he can never win the big he never will he'll never go to the Super Bowl you are wrong Peyton Manning and the Colts are going to play in Super Bowl 41 against the Chicago Bears.